After a one-year hiatus forced by Mother Nature, Canada's best riders have made their way back to the East Coast and the punishing layout of Atlantic Motorsport Park, a track that leaves anyone who challenges it feeling like they've been battered by the salty shores that rest nearby. Who will stand tall atop the podium at Bridgestone CSBK Round 4? Let's turn out the starting lights and go racing in the Maritimes. Marshall Ferguson alongside Colin Fraser as we are getting set for round four, race number eight in the Bridgestone Canadian Superbike Championship season. It is brought to you by Canadian Kawasaki Motors and Pro Cycle, and it is the 50th anniversary of this venue here at Atlantic Motorsport Park. A lot of history, a lot to celebrate being here this weekend. And of course, for Sam Grand, in our first race of the weekend, he had a ton to celebrate. Well, Sam has moved off the I only won one ever list onto the I've won two, which is a much more impressive list, and he's joined some very heavy hitters. But really, the accomplishment there was that he made a huge gamble based on conditions because we had a sort of a drying track condition. We don't know what's going to happen today, but we're expecting it'll be dry and we expect Ben Young to come to the fourth. In the rain yesterday, it was Sam Graham, but in the heat and the sun here for race number eight, we expect it to be Ben Young putting a charge to the rest of the grid. Alex Dumas in second, Jordan Zoke in third. Pole sitter Young at a 107.7. Last year when we ran qualifying in the morning on Friday before the rain, he was at a 107.5, so very close. Great pace from so many of these riders here as we get set on a hot, hot Atlantic Motorsport Park for race number eight of the season with Paul McDonald there alongside Alex Michelle. Brian Wurstall as well making the trip from out west. Great to see him as he'll spin it around Atlantic Motorsport Park. Built in a series of valleys, this is a track old school. It takes advantage of the natural train and makes it really, really exciting, but it takes a while to learn. It is a fun, fast and weaving track here in Atlantic Motorsport Park, Nova Scotia, surrounded by trees as well. Daunting, intimidating surroundings. Let's go down to our Bridgestone pit reporter, Sarah said. Thanks, guys. Although Sam Edgane had a successful fourth round of the championship so far, claiming a win in race seven, despite the rain, he had yet another crash in practice this morning. This is Guerin's third crash here at Chupinacity on his BMW M1000RR. Though none have happened during competition, this could do a number on his confidence. Still, Guerin says overall he feels more prepared than last year. He says he can lead races better and has a great bike this season that makes it easier for him to go fast. Guerin also says that the trick to racing on this track is to slow your mind as much as you can, which he will surely be looking to do as he will need to beat his fellow riders on pure pace in dry conditions. Back to you. Thank you, Sarah. 22 laps here around Atlantic Motorsport Park as Ben Young on BS battery pole position. We look to the Apex Cycle starting lights powered by Honda. They're out and more full throttle in Nova Scotia. Look at Sam Garan from the second row. The whole shot is his. Nice quick start there on the lights. No time waiting around and that suits Garan who likes to get to the line early. So maybe his tires cool a little bit more. And look at that, Garan can't take the proper lights around this track. Yesterday he was all over the place trying to figure out what to do with that weird mix of tires that took him to the win. It is Garan out in front of Ben Young. That's what a move off the starting line to be able to carry his momentum through turns two, three, now four as they head towards the back straight. As Sarah pointed out, uh, Garan has had three falls. He had a bit of a dramatic moment there at the start of the roller coaster, and he is definitely full on trying to break clear, and we did not expect this in the dry. Garan, of course, had those problems in practice and qualifying, so he hasn't had a lot of really quality track time. I have to think some of the confidence coming from his wet track success yesterday carrying over here to the heat and the humidity of Sunday as they head towards the final corner on lap number one, climb up over the hill, 
and make their way towards the front straight as they complete lap number one of 22. And I think the most interesting thing here is David McKay in fifth place aboard that Honda with the leaders. He showed fairly well in the rain yesterday, so it's uh, it's been a good trip out east. Of course, uh, it's a tricky situation here when you're trying to prove your ability on a track that uh, does not always reward, reward pardon me, the most aggressive riding. In behind Ben Young and Sam Garan, it is Alex Duma. I haven't mentioned him yet, but a solid start for the economy. Lube Ducati, plate number 23, and then Jordan Zoke hanging on there in fourth position as well. I should mention the BMW McDonald. He had to pull out yesterday with some technical issues, but this is another good effort for a guy who's been doing better of late. And look at this pack down the back straight as Ben Young makes the move and the number one plate back into first place here on lap two. Slam and Sammy, a little dramatic on the back straight there. He was right at the very edge, far left of the track on the roller coaster. Hopefully get to see that again to understand what happened. Okay, here goes the replay. We're on board with Young, and look at that. Garant out of the seat, putting all his weight in the pegs, trying to save it, but Young sees this and knows that Garant didn't get the drive. The door is wide open. It is not a dramatic pass from Ben's point of view. He gets onto the brakes, and he's well clear of ground as the two BMW M's continue to style in the lead. Now the challenge for Grant is can he latch on to Ben Young because when Young gets in these situations he is so good in clean air of being able to distance himself from the pack. And you've got to ask yourself about Duma, who's of course still learning that Ducati in the dry conditions. Uh, this is his second weekend on that motorcycle. He's shown some pace but not consistency. He just doesn't have enough time on the bike. So hopefully Duma can get up in there and mix it up a little bit. Got to talk about Jordan Zoke, right? The veteran showing very well at a track where he's had so much success. Is Ben Young out in front, trying to stretch his legs at the roller coaster here, Atlantic Motorsport Park, race eight of the Bridgestone CSBK season. Portions of the Bridgestone Canadian Superbike Championship are brought to you in part by Canadian Kawasaki Motors, Pro Cycle, and Golf Race Fuels. Close captioning for the Bridgestone Canadian Superbike Championship is brought to you in part by AIM Insurance, MotorcycleCourse.com, Supersonic Road Race School, and Revs for Rep. You have not missed anything here at Atlantic Motorsport Park. Ben Young, Sam Grant, Alex Dumont, Jordan Soak in the ODH Snow City Honda of David McKay down in fifth position right now as Grant trying to hold off Dumont for second spot. But he has championship aspirations that are much larger. This season, uh, we we came 100% uh, like all in. Uh, I told my father uh, during the winter, like I, I think I'm mature enough. I think I I can win some races. I think I can challenge for for the championship. So let's go 100%. And uh, if we don't win the the championship, I think we'll have to come back uh, next season. So uh, that's the ultimate goal. And I think we're getting closer and closer uh, every every session on the track. We're doing a lot of progress with the new bike, with Steve, with uh, Denis and with Mario, so uh, I think we're, we're a season or two uh, before a championship win. Have to agree with Slam and Sammy. He is showing improved form this year and uh, working towards a championship. Of course, the toughest issue in terms of a possible championship is you have to pry it out of Ben Young's grasp, and boy, has he got comfortable holding onto that Canada Cup three times in the last few years. See now the lap time of Ben Young being thrown down the gauntlet. He is consistently in the mid 108s right now, Colin, and the rest of the field trying to find a way to work their way back up to him. Yeah, he is the only guy in the eights. Everyone else is basically in the very low nines. And of course, a low eight is a fantastic race pace. The trend to a string of low eights was established by Young when he came from behind to win in an incredible filling race here in 2019 that kind of established the start of the Young dynasty. As they bounce their way over the cracks and crevices on the back straight, trying to hold on to the handlebars as Garan, who had that bobble earlier in the race, allowing Ben Young to get past, is smooth here on lap number seven of 22. On board here, really, from Dumas shows how hard uh, Garan can ride, and the fact that he is not stuck on one line. He doesn't mind sliding the bike, and he aggressively gets into the turns and then lets the throttle do a lot of the work. We've talked about how he doesn't like a lot of electronic intervention in his bike, unlike Ben. Oh, oh my goodness. And Jordan Zoke goes down.
down the inside and takes over third position. What a move, he lunged it down. And I think Dumas was maybe being a little too respectful of trying to figure out a move on Garin. And that is classic Jordan Soak. And it is so fantastic to see him riding his Kawasaki that way. It brings back memory. Soak's first ride on a superbike here was in uh, 1998. Incredible as you see down into turn number one with Garin hitting the more traditional apex of turn number one, and Zoke just finding the tiniest opening to take over third spot. And he's counting on that gap staying. He knows that Dumas holds his line. And look at that on board with Zoke, and boy, is Garin battling with that BMW. It is not happy on the roller coaster, and that wears you out. That's going to be hard on the bike, hard on the tires, and mostly hard on you mentally, and here he goes. And now it's down once again through the inside. Can he hold on to it? Turning the bike back towards the hill, and yes, Zoke has taken over second spot. Garan is on his back. Dumas is right there in behind, but Zoke, in a singular lap, all of a sudden turning back the clock. Interest to turn one, interest to the carousel in turn nine. Both times on the brakes with a lot of determination. Look at that, Garan with Dumas side by side at one. Things are really heating up in this battle for the final podium spot. And as Ben Young sets down consistent fast lap times out front, this three pack are absolutely going to war over the last lap and a half. And it's got to be seen as progress. Jordan Soak missed the season two years ago because of a motocross injury, rode into health as best he could last year, although really not in his normal form. But this is vintage Soak. This is what he's capable of. And guess that we're going to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park next, a place where he's won an awful lot of races. This is a terrific sign. And look at this on board with Dumas now, showing Garant is really struggling. And once again, the door is open on the inside of seven as they climb the yeah, same spot that he had the trouble earlier and again, almost kicking it over the top as Sam Grant continues to battle with his BMW, but it's the Kawasaki of Jordan Zoke in second spot here at Atlantic Motorsport Park, a place he knows so very well. Welcome back to Shubenacadie, Nova Scotia, as it's still Ben Young out front. Jordan Zoke, Alex Dumas, Sam Grant has slid down to fourth as he battles his BMW. And Andrew Van Winkle is up in the fifth position. David McKay was there. What happened to McKay here, Colin? Here's our slow-mo replay of turn four, and David's been having a good race, but you can see it. this looks like he maybe leaned a bit too much there. And uh, normally you hope that the bike just lays down, but that one, at least the camera didn't lay down. And there you can see the marshals helping Dave move the bike off to the side. So that's a shame given he was having a pretty good weekend here in Nova Scotia, and we're back to that war for second. Yeah, tough for the 2023 Economy Lubin Tire Pro Sport Bike Division champion as he makes his way into Pro Superbike and hoping to have some better results at CTMP in round number five. But it is Garan and Andrew Van Winkle that are battling against each other. But Philip DeCamp Blanchett, not that far behind once again, just like he was yesterday. So Van Winkle on that Souza GSXR 600 that's been showing so very well in the sport by class. He's a 17-year-old from BC who joined the series partway through. Then DeCamp Blanchett, he's from Alberta, he's 17 and uh, he's also on a middleweight class motorcycle. So these two guys showing so well, and this is on a dry track, right? There's no explanation about rain tires or anything like that. This is just really, really good pace for these guys. And this is, this is how you uh, cut your teeth and also how you earn a spot on hopefully a better motorcycle. Yeah, impressive to see, obviously, the health and fitness of Jordan Zoak improving, but also the younger riders here in Nova Scotia. It's about 35 degrees ambient temperature more on the Alex Dumas camp. Let's go down to our Bridgestone pit reporter, Sarah said. Thanks, guys. In the seventh race of the championship, we saw the first ever real on-track battle between rivals Alex Dumas and Ben Young since the return of Dumas to the Bridgestone CSBK series. Though the 2021 champion still hadn't had a win with his new Economy Loop Ducati team, he passed Young for second place on the final lap. Dumas said he found a good passing spot during the race where he also previously managed to pass Jordan Zoke and knew that he was going to try to do the same to Young there as well, which he did and ultimately it worked in his favor. Overall, Dumas says he's focusing on enjoying himself racing here in Shubenacadie. Back to you guys. I don't know how much fun he's having relaxing looking at the back of that green Kawasaki because he is all over the back of Zoke and we've seen this a lot since Dumas has come back. He always seems to be locked in a battle with one of the front runners. That it's Zoke is a bit of a surprise. Also interesting, these two don't have a lot of time on track together because Zoke was hurt and then was probably a little behind Dumas the last couple of years, but they definitely have battled at most point. This is one of those situations where you think about alternate universes of if 
you had Alex Dumas around full time in the past if Jordan Zoke had not gotten injured, what these battles would have been like. But great to see it on track here in Nova Scotia. And I got to say, Zoke's bike, you know, we were watching uh, Garin struggle with the BMW. There might be some kind of problem there, but Zoke's Kawasaki, that ninja is working really, really well. Of course, he understands setup and he's raced this track so many times, but the bike handles well and I'm uh, intrigued by how comfortable he is using all the road. Alex Dumas certainly battle-tested coming out of round number three at Rad Torque in Edmonton after he and Torn Collins went wheel-to-wheel -wheel several times over. So he will be, uh, I think, at peace with the idea of trying to battle his way through Jordan Zoke as you see Zoke catch the bike here and then turn his weight left to get up the hill into three. Zoke running a little wide, leaving the door open. You mentioned Torin Collins. One thing about Zoke is he's smoother and easier to predict than Torin Collins, who has a bit of a top pack Rose Razgathlioglu approach. And if you watch World Super Bike, you know that Top Rack is a really hard guy to follow. All over the place, and the smooth, straight shooting Ben Young continues to set the tone out in front of this race as it looks like Duma might have a bit of pace here down the back straight. Will he take a look? On Jordan Zoke, not close enough. And that was interesting because Dumont got a really good drive. He had the bike positioned the way he wanted at the top of the roller coaster. Look, he's going to have a shot into the carousel. Uh, and a couple of corners later, he dips it down inside. And the economy lube Ducati does pass that CKM Kawasaki. And now you see Dumont grabbing as much throttle as he can to try and create separation before they climb the hill. Yeah, here we go on board with Dumont. And he's made up his mind. He's going to go. This kink is really fast and tricky. Zoke has left the door open. He's open okay with the move. You can bet that right now Jordan is uh, planning his retaliation. Now we look backwards from the Ducati. A good shot of Zoke, who's very fast through the carousel, very smooth. The economy loop Ducati of Alex Duma moves up on the grid. Portions of the Bridgestone Canadian Superbike Championship are brought to you in part by Canadian Kawasaki Motors, ProCycle, and Golf Race Fuels. Closing stages here of race number eight in the 2024 GP Bikes Pro Superbike feature class is Ben Young in control out front. Alex Dumas getting past Jordan Zoke. As now Zoke sits in third spot. Samuel Graham battling that BMW sits in fourth. And out in front again, Young just extending his lead lap over lap over lap. Let's mention fifth place British Columbian Andrew Van Winkle did a 109.7. He qualified at 110.8, so about a minute, pardon me, a second quicker than he qualified, and that's on a GSXR 600, so he's given away about 70 horsepower to our top guns. And Philip DeGamma Blanchette as well in sixth position here as Incredible to see some of the young riders making their way east and making an impact in the point standings in race number eight. And we watch Duma here on the Ducati. He seems to be established in second, and he's looking a little smoother. His lap times were inconsistent, and I think he's just making peace with the Ducati. I don't think it's handling really well, but he's got used to it. He's figured out what to do, and of course, you know his every move on the motorcycle because you can hear that motorcycle everywhere on the racetrack <laughs> over top of all the other motorcycles. It is incredible. If you have a chance to come out to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park for round number five and listen to the Ducati go buzzing down the back straight, you're going to never forget that because it is loud, it is proud, and it is certainly in control of second spot right now. Yeah, there aren't any other V4s in the race, so it's nice to know what that one is up to. It's uh, reminiscent of the old Honda RC51 V-Twin, and at Shubenacadie, we could hear those bikes all the way around the racetrack over top of all the other motorcycles. It really does seem like Dumas is getting more and more comfortable, too, as you see him wheeling down this back straight section and starting to get the bike under control. Keep in mind, he's only been on it basically a week before before we went off to Rad Torque in Edmonton for round number three. Yeah, we got to remember Trevor Dion started the year on this motorcycle. Trevor switched to a BMW on Sunday at Shannonville in our second race of the season. And then the bike was not used at our second round at Grand Bend. And then the deal was made to bring Dumas on board. He sort of came out of semi-retirement. He'd been racing in the United States. So it's been a terrific addition to the series. And we got to thank the whole crew at Economy Lube and Scott Miller, the tuner, for getting that Ducati in motion. Absolutely. As the Van Dolder's home team BMW of Ben Young 
He's in control of this one out front and haven't seen a lot of him because he's been smooth sailing. Again, the 108.4s, 108.5s, dipped into the 109s and then eh, for a lap or two went back to his original pace. Yeah, Mr. Consistency, It's uh, there's just not enough positive words about how Ben goes at this track and he makes it look much, much easier than it is. You can see a little bit of a wheelie. He's a little calmer on the bike than Dumas is, but I think that's probably because his bike is a little bit easier to ride. The setup on that machine is superb and he's shown a pretty much every track in the series that he's comfortable with the BMW. Even the onboards with Ben Young are smooth, making his way around here at Atlantic Motorsport Park as he starts to wind things down and head towards the white flag. Connor Campbell, by the way, is down in eighth right now. If he finishes in that spot, he'll actually overtake the rookie lead in the point standings over David McKay, who crashed out earlier on in this race. Campbell fighting with McDonnell, and we got also mentioned Canfield, the local on a Suzuki, and Wurstall, who's from out west on that Honda. So a lot of interesting efforts going on, and often here, it's not that close late in the race. People are pretty much in survival mode. This race has been far more aggressive, way more pace, and that's more fun for everybody, whether it's you and I or the spectators. Ben Young, smooth on the final lap here at AMP, the final time around this track in 2024. Tremendous hosts, and certainly Ben Young has enjoyed the East Coast hospitality. And remember, we're heading on to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park for two races, as is typical for our series. Last year, we had three, and Ben dominated all three of them. So you can bet he is excited about heading to what is relatively home ground for him and a happy stomping area. But you got to mention, Zoke in third has an awful lot of success at CTMP, too. And I think Dumas will believe that the Ducati is very well suited to that track. Absolutely. It was a grand victory yesterday here at AMP. Today, it is Ben Young as BMW. They take the victory in back-to-back -back races on the East Coast. Ben Young is your victor. Solid effort by Ben Young, kind of reasserting his position atop the championship standings. He has more than a race in hand with four races left to go. And there's Dumas, solid second, another podium, still looking for the first Ducati victory. Dumas with a tremendous effort to make his way through the field after Sam Grant had that great start at the beginning of this race. Jordan Zog comes home in third. He gets on the podium. That will make a lot of the local fans and longtime followers of the Bridgestone CSBK very happy as we see the final standings. Hot and humid conditions here. Ben Young showed his pace. Got to mention Van Winkle moving up. Philip de Gamma Blanchette, the two middleweight class guys doing so well. Connor Campbell getting that seventh for McDonald on the last lap. There we see the rest of our finishers, including Wurzdahl, who did well in the Honda and earned 10th. Let's head down and hear from our winner. Congratulations on first place, Ben. How does it feel to finish round four off with a win? Yeah, good. You know, we had uh, we had this pace the last two days. Unfortunately, we couldn't show it yesterday in the rain. But uh, yeah, the guys put a stellar bike together this weekend. We tried a Bridgestone tire on the front that we haven't tried yet, so that paid off. And uh, yeah, the bike ran phenomenal. Thanks to the Van Dolder's home team, BMW team. Uh, the boys put together a great package and uh, ready to yeah, head to Japan and go have a fun weekend. Congratulations. Thank you. Much more ahead for Ben Young. He continues to lead the point standings, but there is a lot of contention behind him. Yeah, got to look at that battle for fifth between the rookies in the class, Connor Campbell for Kawasaki and Honda's David McKay. Then we look at the points for the first time this season, BMW Motorrad. I guess when you have two different riders winning races, <laughs> that's going to help you a lot in the point standings, Kawasaki in second. Are they going to get some help at CTMP? Well, it was grand yesterday. It is young today, joined by Alex Duma and Jordan Zoke on the podium. That will do it from Atlantic Motorsport Park. Thanks for watching.